Hi everyone. Um, so this is the first video for module one. Um, it's going to be a short one, I think. Uh, it's just going to cover the first page of the module one guide um, and the set of slides that you'll find there as well. So if you um, if you go into uh, the modules and into module one, module one guide is here and the web app architecture slides are here. This is what I'm going to present to you today. Just the first page of the module one guide. If you download it, this is what you get. It's just about what is a web app and it has this picture on it here. Um, but I'm going to present to you guys this set of slides. So let me just... So um, before we can, we, should, we set about starting to write code to program web apps, um, we need to know what it is we're talking about when we're talking about a web app. What is it? What, what is, how is it put together? Web apps are not like the apps that you wrote in uh, Python and your Java course. So uh, I think the, the most sophisticated you got in, in your Java course was you would have created a graphical user interface app um, made to run on a desktop. So desktop and mobile apps, generally speaking, um, all of the processing um, happens on a single device. Uh, in a web app, we have a situation where we have distributed processing. We have a server over here and we have a client. Um, so the word client in web app design sometimes refers to the computer that the, that the user is using. Sometimes it refers to the user, the person surfing the web. Uh, and sometimes it refers to the specific browser that they're using. So usually I'll mean browser. So over here we have Chrome running on the user's machine or Firefox or whatever. And then over here we have a server far away, um, separated physically um, through the internet and connected through the internet. Um, these are the kinds of um, web pages or websites that you wrote in your HTML and CSS course. Basically, um, somehow a user initiates an HTTP request. HTTP stands for Hypertext Transfer Protocol. It's in the module there. Uh, sorry, it's in the module one guide, uh, if you want that, um, that acronym explained. Hypertext Transfer Protocol. Uh, a request is sent from the client. Maybe the, the user clicked a link. Um, maybe uh, they just typed uh, an address into the address bar uh, and hit enter. But one way or another, a request is sent and is routed through the magic of the internet to the server. Um, and the request is always for a file. So uh, and we'll get into the anatomy of a request much later. But um, the user is always requesting a file, maybe index.html. So the server then retrieves it. And the main job that the server does at this point if this is an Apache server, which we'll be using in this course, is it just asks, does this file contain a script that I need to run? Uh, and for what you were doing in HTML and CSS, the answer was always no. So what it does is it, well, we usually think of it as it returns the file, returns index.html back to the user. But it's a slightly more complicated than that, what it actually does. What it does is it builds, the server builds an HTTP response to the request to send back. Uh, the request itself is like it kind of like you can think of it like an email address. It has header information that specifies where the request is going, what the resource um, that is being requested is, who uh, originated the request, and so on. And then it has a body, which is often empty for an HTTP request. For the response, same thing. It's like sending an email back. It's got a header saying this response is going to um, the address of the user's uh, browser. Um, it was sent by the address of the server, um, and, but the body contains the requested resource. So actually it doesn't send the file back, it takes the file and copies and pastes it into the response and sends it back to the client. The client, the browser, unpacks the response, retrieves the contents of index.html, and then displays it. And at this point it may, uh, may initiate new requests. So if the page requires a CSS file, it's going to send a request for that CSS file and the, and the server is going to send back an HTTP response with the contents of the CSS file. When that's all done and the page is rendered, uh, the user will interact with the page and eventually will click a button or press on a form uh, or, or click a link or press on a form button and initiate another HTTP request and it continues. So these are not web apps. This is just flat web pages like you made in your first web course. Now in the first two weeks of this course, weeks one and two, we are going to um, put some functionality on the back end. So now when the HTTP request comes, um, we're going to be writing um, files in a language called PHP, which is still the number one um, language um, for server-side scripting on the web. Um, so when the server receives the request, uh, the answer will be yes. This, this resource that's being requested does contain script, so I have to run the script. 
And on the, on the server, the script can be in any language. We're going to use PHP. Um, C Sharp is a popular choice. Some people use JavaScript on the server side. Um, any language, Python, um, whatever you want, C++. C++. Uh, it runs the script. And the job of this script is to help the server write the HTTP response. So the PHP programs you are running are going to actually create some of the HTML code that gets sent back in the HTTP response. That goes back, it displays the page, the user interacts and sends another request. The other thing that's different here is that the user may be filling in a form which will cause the request to be sent with something called parameters, which we'll be looking at in the first couple of weeks as well. So the contents of the form are sent along with the original request, the file is retrieved, the script is run, and so on. Um, in weeks three to four, we're going to add a database. Um, so that's this little part over here. So you're, we're still working in PHP, but when your PHP file is retrieved and the script is run, it may contain instructions that cause the server to interact with a database that is contained within the server. This will be an SQL in the language SQL. Uh, and we'll be using a MySQL database. Um, any web app worth its salt has a database on the back end. Um, it's keeping user information there so that it can recognize and log in users. If it's a web, if it's a store, it might be keeping um, product information there. Uh, it might be keeping um, course information if it's Canvas. Uh, whatever the web app does, it stores its, its permanent data here and um, the scripts can interact with it. So when the user is interacting with a web page with a database, essentially they're getting access to their data, uh, which is stored in the database record here. So that'll be the uh, weeks three to four, we'll add a database. Then we'll have a test. Then week six to seven, so we'll take a pause for week five. Week six to seven after the break, we'll come back and we'll start looking at client-side scripting. So server-side scripting over here lets you create custom content. When I go to Canvas and you go to Canvas, we get a different page. The page has different content on it, depending on what courses you've enrolled in and so on. Um, when you go to uh, sign into Amazon or whatever, you'll get different content pushed at you, even though you're going to the same address. So my view of Amazon.ca is different from your view of Amazon.ca Amazon because of uh, server-side scripting that is creating content and creating the web page content on the fly. So it's customized content. Over here, JavaScript uh, runs on the client. It runs inside the browser. So sometimes when a file is retrieved and returned, it contains JavaScript commands, raw code in JavaScript. And that code gets run to help render the page and sometimes to do uh, to make the page, to make the user experience good. So whenever there's there are pop-ups or things moving around on the page, um, anything remotely fancy going on on the page itself between requests, um, whether you're playing a game or whether you just see something slide in from the side, um, instead of just appearing on the screen, uh, when you see menus pull, drop down and so on, often that is JavaScript. And so that's what JavaScript does is it makes pages dynamic. It makes them um, move uh, without requiring a, a page reload. It makes things move and it makes things happen on the page. Um, unlike on the server side, there is only one language um, for client-side scripting. No matter what browser you're using, it's JavaScript. So JavaScript is probably one of the most important languages, if not the most important language in the world right now because it's required for every single web app um, to do the, the client-side um, scripting. Finally, what we're going to do uh, in Module 4 is we're going to add something called Ajax requests. Um, you guys might have noticed um, when you, I don't know, when you're, you're looking at a Twitter feed or a Facebook feed and you scroll to the bottom, um, it kind of creates more content, like the, the scroll kind of never ends. That's because in the background, there's a JavaScript program that's watching you scroll. And when you scroll far enough, it in the background sends off an HTTP request to the server to get a bit more data. So when you're getting near the bottom of the scroll of your social media feed, uh, the JavaScript program kicks in, says, uh-oh, we're near the bottom, sends off, it quickly sends off a request to the server. The server returns with some data and the JavaScript program puts that data onto the page. Um, anytime you, uh, you go to log in or you go to load some content and you see a little wheel spinning um, on the page, you know, while the rest of the page is, is all there, there's a wheel spinning in the middle and eventually your content gets put there, that's an Ajax request. And it's, uh, it's really uh, basic and important to um, good user uh, experience in modern um, web interface design. So that's where we're going. Uh, the final, the sort of the view of the full stack that we're going to is here. So full stack means you're doing both the client and the server side and the database. That's the full stack of software, the database, the server scripting, the client scripting, and the HTML and CSS. 
So by the end of this course, we'll make a project where you're going to have control over all of that, and you're going to create a little web app that will handle it all. Okay, so um, that's what we're doing. That's the architecture of a web app, uh, and that's where we're aiming for in this course. We should get there by about week nine, um, and then we'll look at some further topics, and we'll have a project at the end. Okay, uh, so questions and comments, you can put them in the, um, in the YouTube um, uh, discussion area. Uh, make sure you put your full name, or you can send me an email, or you can wait until the uh, live class and ask me your questions then. That's it.